Welcome back. It is 742 on this Friday. So right now, a bill to help prevent and fight wildfires in our state is waiting for Governor Jay Inslee's signature. This after the House voted yesterday to pass the $125 million bill. This morning, I'm joined by Commissioner of Public Lands, Hillary Franz, to talk about the bill and how important this is going to be for our state. Commissioner Franz, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I have to ask you, I mean, we sort of followed you through this process here. How do you feel knowing that this is headed to the governor's desk right now? I feel relieved. I, the fact is we continue year after year to see catastrophic wildfires. 2020 was, uh, we're not a stranger to that kind of disaster. And we've known that it's coming and it's only getting worse. And we need the critical investments. And this legislation uh, actually puts those investments on the ground finally for us to address this crisis. I do have to admit, as someone with severe asthma, I am excited about the hope and the fact that maybe something can help fight these wildfires. I think we all dread them every single year. So tell us a little bit about your plan for the money that will come from this bill. Yeah, so this uh, bill specifically is set for funding in three critical areas for us to be able to change the trajectory on when it comes to these catastrophic wildfires. First, wildfire response. We know year after year we have skeleton crews on the ground and limited air resources in the air to get on these fires quickly and put them out, especially when we have 56 fires in a 24-hour period in every corner of the state like we did last Labor Day. This would help bring new air resources in to complement the 11 helicopters we have, 10 of them which fought in the Vietnam War. Uh, in addition, we'll have newer technology that allows us to fly those air resources at night. Um, and we will have 100 new firefighters at our agency to be able to make sure we don't have skeleton crews on the ground. We're also gonna be driving resources down to the local level to our local fire districts who are oftentimes first on the line. They know their community, they know the landscape, they can get on those fires quickly, but they are very under-resourced. Many with just volunteer firefighters and one fire engine to help. Second big part is forest restoration. We know why we're seeing more catastrophic fires. We have a forest health crisis in Washington state. It's been very severe on the Eastern part of the state and it's growing on the Western side. This enables us to have $30 million of biennium to get into those forests, remove the dead dying disease trees, the smaller dimer that are literally just fuel for this fire. And last is community resilience. We all remember those tragic photos of Malden, the town of Malden completely destroyed in just a few hours, 80% of the buildings and homes lost. And many of those homeowners had no home to go back to um, and with limited resources. This will now help those communities home by home, neighborhood by neighborhood, become more resilient. The 2 million homes at risk in Washington state today so this is a great start to actually get on top of a crisis that has been growing for a long time. I think it's important for people to know, I know you mentioned your asthma and the worry about smoke. It's taken a long time for us to get to this crisis that we face in wildfire. It is going to take us a while to get out. These resources, for example, we won't really see this fire season because of how late session is and how early our fire season already is. We had 214 fires just in the month of April. Historic record number of fires, and we're not even through the month. Um, so this is going to take a concerted focus, a committed focus, um, and I'm excited to be working with the legislature, excited to be working with the people of Washington State to make this change. I'm glad that you actually mentioned that because that was going to be my next question is when I feel like, you know, we are impatient as as human beings. We want to see change immediately and we want this to take. But it sounds like we do need to step back and be patient uh, in this regard in order to see uh, the effects of this money right now. So first, absolutely. Much of the money won't come until late July. We're already in fire season. By the time we get the air resource on contract by the time we train up those firefighters we're starting to be in the end of 2021 so the resources there are likely to come more in the 2022 where the public will see it on forest restoration and community resilience we're going to get to work on that right away but we've got a lot of ground to cover when it comes to the forests that are dying and a lot of work that needs to happen similarly with our communities what I will say is this, oftentimes people think there's nothing we can do right now when fire is at our doorstep. Every single homeowner in Washington state, especially those in a wildland urban interface can do something right now to create defensible space around their home to help protect them this fire season and protect our firefighters. 
Um, in addition, 90% of our, our fires are started by humor, humans. And one of the things right now, many of the fires we've seen just in April are debris pile fires that are started by people. Mm -hmm. We need people to take steps to not start fires. That's why we have a burn ban in effect right now, already this early in this year. Wow. That makes me a little nervous hearing that we already have that burn ban this early in the year, but uh, it's also good to know that there, this money is on the way. And Commissioner, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's been interesting to follow this process, and, and we know how much you've pushed for this as well. Thank you. It's a historic moment, and I, we're going to do everything we can, and we urge people to be safe and take steps to be safe. Thank Let, you. Let's